All right, uh, hello everybody. Welcome to a new topic. Um, in the previous one, as you may have noticed, what I did was I did the continuity equation, I did the conservation of momentum, they call it impulse momentum, and I did the conservation of energy, and I oversimplified the equation, as you will see in a minute. Okay, But everything I did so far was based on in viscid fluid. Okay, So now I'm going to switch gears and look at the viscous case. And some people even refer to it as real flow, as if the other one's unreal, right? So something to know. So this is much more important. But before going forward, the first thing I want to talk about is a non-dimensional parameter called Reynolds number. The Reynolds number is basically the ratio of inertial to viscous forces. Okay? And if you want the equations up here, it is going to be rho is the density of the fluid, called mass density as well. V is the velocity of the fluid. D is some kind of a characteristic length, right? So D is there to just highlight that it's a diameter that this is a pipe, but it doesn't have to be. At the denominator, you will see that this is the dynamic viscosity, right? And as we have seen in the first uh, topic, um, I can combine dynamic viscosity and the density, and I can call it kinematic viscosity, and you can see that this equation can be even more simplified, velocity times diameter divided by the kinematic viscosity is the Reynolds number. Right. An important thing about the Reynolds number is um, if this is lower than 2100, I'm just referring to the numbers from the FE reference manual, and I'm on page 181. The flow will be laminar, okay? And if it is between 2100 and 10,000, and that, that number kind of change from source to source, but the FE manual says that, so we're going to go with it. It's called uh, transitional, and about 10,000, it's going to be turbulent, right? So as you will see soon, this will make a significant difference how I treat fluid flow phenomena. But the equation that I showed you over here is only applicable for Newtonian fluids, right? But luckily, those Newtonian fluids are some things that we encounter day to day, such as air, such as water, such as oil, etc., right? But in the case that you're exposed to um, non Newtonian fluids, and I covered that in, in um, topic number one, you may want to refer back to those, all right? But basically, here's what happens to the Reynolds number. I do realize that the first instance when I just showed it to you, it looks kind of scary. But um, actually, the real difference is you punch a little bit more into your calculator. That's all there is to it, okay? And there's a K over here, again, from topic one. K is the consistency index, and N is the power law index. So those numbers will be supplied. You will be able to just plug in the equation, and you're going to get the Reynolds number. And the critical Reynolds number are still going to be the same, 1,100 and 10,000, right? So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually modify the Bernoulli's equation. What I mean by modifying is I'm going to add a term that we assumed to be zero before. And you can see the equation in here. On the right-hand side of the Bernoulli's equation, now I have a plus hf. And please note that this particular equation is divided by the g. So I have a velocity head, I have a pressure head, I have an elevation head, and this hf, the unit of it is in length. Okay? And this hf... Um, helps me to find out what is the loss in my system, right? And I'm only looking at a horizontal pipe. I'm looking at a pipe with a constant diameter as well. So if I do it, you will see an equation that I can obtain. The first thing is, let's say that point 0.1 over here, and there's point 0.2 over here, right? Uh, what I can do is if I use my continuity equation for a constant diameter pipe, so the velocity heads are gone because V1 is equal to V2. The second thing is that I can also look at the elevation head. What will happen is as the z is the same, so the elevation head will cancel each other as well. That's the second thing. So you can see over here that I get myself hf is equal to delta p between a point 1 and 2 divided by the specific weight. Okay? This is only for a horizontal pipe and a constant diameter pipe. Okay, the next thing is they looked at the laminar flow. It's important, laminar flow between two parallel plates as well as a pipe. And they give you a formula, all you see in here, for the velocity distribution inside of that pipe. Okay? And there's a V max that you see here. That is the center line velocity. The velocity will be maximum at the center line. This lowercase r is a variable. It's like the y if I y direction if I have a two parallel plates. Okay? If I'm using polar coordinates for a pipe, then it will be the r theta z's r, right? 
And this capital R is either the radius of the pipe, or, important, that is the halfway between the, these two parallel plates. Okay? The distance between the two parallel plates is then 2R. And you see this Vmax, that will be two times the mean velocity, or the average velocity, if I have a pipe. It will be 1.5 times if it is for parallel plates. But those are only for laminar. And if this is turbulent, what will happen is this Vmax will be 1.18 times the Vmean for fully turbulent flow. But note that it's rare to see fully turbulent flow in real life. Okay, there will always be some kind of laminar incorporated to it. The next is to looking at this HF. I talked about this loss, right? So let's take a look at this HF term. This HF term for a more general flow can be obtained by looking at this equation. So this F is Darcy friction factor. Okay. Before I go further, what I want to tell you is um, if you're a chemical engineer watching this video, you guys refer to that as the Manning friction factor as opposed to Darcy friction factor. They are very similar to each other. The only difference is you're going to multiply your factor, chemical engineers, by 4 to obtain the Darcy. And this F is a function of the Reynolds number and epsilon over D. And epsilon is the roughness of the pipe. And D is the diameter. For laminar flow, this actually will be 64 over Reynolds. Okay, so this F value will be 64 over Reynolds and will be independent of epsilon over D. This is not in incorporated into the reference manual. Uh, but I have, if I'm interested in the turbulent case, what I will do is I will look at this Moody's chart. This Moody's chart or diagram is given on page 200 of the reference manual, 10th edition. And at the same page, we're going to see those epsilon values of the, the roughness for concrete, for PVC, etc. is listed there as well. So you will be able to obtain it. And I will solve some practice problems to illustrate how, I, how we are you going to be able to obtain your F value. Okay. The next is the length, length of the pipe. D is the diameter. V is the velocity, G is the acceleration due to gravity, right? So that is how you're going to um, obtain your F value. But note that this HF is obtained due to friction, but it's only for a straight path. There's no bend. There's no weight valve okay, in my analysis. So that is another term that I'm just going to talk about now. It is called the minor losses, or in the reference manual, it's called this HF fittings. And this is due to, let's say that I have a 45 degree bend. Let's say that I have a valve, I have an expansion, I have a contraction. So those, those will add to my losses. You can see the energy equation here. Well, what happens is, I, in addition to adding an HF term, the loss due to the friction in my pipes, I have one more HF fitting, as simple as that. And you can see the formula for HF fitting is actually simpler. C, or I call this KL in my lecture videos, V square over 2G. And this KL is given to you in the reference manual. And just very briefly, if I have a gradual contraction, it's going to be 0.04. And if I have an inlet, um, for let's say there's a tank and there's a pipe, and if this pipe is protruding into the tank, that will be 0.8. If I have myself a sharp um, entrance, it will be 0.5. If I have rounded, they call it 0.1, but it kind of changes as a function of the radius of curvature. And for each exit that I have, it's going to be 1. So this information will be supplied to you, and it's given to you on page 183 of the reference manual. The reference manual also on page 183, they gave you this um, for laminar circular pipe. They gave you an equation between the volumetric flow rate. What is that a function of? I have myself pi, you can see d to the power of 4, so the diameter. I have delta P on the numerator. In the denominator, I have myself the viscosity, 128 times the length of the pipe. Also, so far, everything that I talked about is, as you've seen, either parallel plates in one you know, specific case, but then the rest of it was all for circular pipes. But in real life, not everything is circular real pipes, where the applications of fluid mechanics is applied. So we have other geometries as well. In order to collimate that, and also, very simple thing, we, the first thing I talked about is the Reynolds number, rho v d, the diameter. So what is the diameter of a rectangular air conditioning duct that I have here? So in order to co compensate that for that, we have something called dh, hydraulic diameter. 
I have a long lecture, lecture video on that. I'm going to link it over here so you can understand more than I can explain in a short amount of time here. Okay. The FE manual also has hydraulic radius. One thing kind of be careful is um, hydraulic radius is not half of the hydraulic diameter. Okay. It is actually one fourth. And in my lecture video, I show you why it is a fourth. And you know, you can watch this. It's the beyond scope for an FE exam review. It's kind of interesting. So now I'm going to, I'm jumping to page number 186 in the 10th edition of the reference manual. And what you will see that they have something called mouth pad pipelines. This is related to this concept that I'm talking about. Um, so sometimes what happens is if I want to have more flow rate in my system, so I have some parallel pipes. So there's, let's say that there's a pipe over here. It goes into two branches. It separates, right? And then combines at the, some other point, right? So if I'm looking at the flow rate, I'm going to add the flow rate in each branch. So branch A, branch B, I'm going to add the flow rates. But interestingly, note that the loss, the head loss, for each branch will be the same. So that is kind of important for the FE exam. All right, I know it's been a kind of long review, but uh, one, I have two more things to talk about, then I'll kind of let you go. The first thing is, okay, I said that there's a pipe and there's a flow. What if the pipe is not full? of the sewer systems, right? So how am I going to deal with that? It's called the Hazen-Williams equation. And that will give you the velocity for not completely full pipes, okay? So you can see that in the equation there's a K1, it's just a constant value. The C is the roughness, Hazen-Williams roughness coefficient. And it's typically in this form like 100 to 150. So this is given, unfortunately this is given in the civil engineering section of their first panel. They use this more as opposed to mechanicals or chemicals. Um, but you can, you know, you can use um, the smoother is going to be higher end, like PVC is 150. But I also, it's a complex thing. It depends on the age of the pipe as well. It's going to be 110, 120, 130. Okay. This RH is hydraulic radius, which is one fourth of hydraulic diameter that we talked about. This S is the slope, as the reference manual calls it. But it's actually this slope of the energy grade line that I've talked about in the previous room. And the very last thing is the Manning's equation. This Manning's equation can be used also for um, pipes that is not entirely full of uh, fluid or liquid flowing in it. But mainly Manning equation is, is, is used for open channels. If this is open. And you can see the parameters over there. It is very similar to Hazen Williams equation, and there are very common terms. The to the power terms are different, as you see. In the Manning equation, I have 1 over n. In the uh, Hazen Williams equation, I have c. So both are roughness coefficients. Okay, so it's just the way it is. And I will solve some questions to illustrate how you can practice for the FA exam. Thank you for watching this video. I will be back with you with many, many practice problems.